With my pledge complete for Monster Hunter 4U, there was just a few other things I needed to do, like finally learn Guard Point. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to the epilogue of my Monster Hunter 4U journey. We are just weeks away from the servers being turned down for Monster Hunter 4U, and something I've been talking about since the very beginning, which is learning Guard Point, as well as a reflection. Uh, so I've gone back and actually looked at my Journal Zero, my first impressions before turning on this game, which actually happened on January 26th is when I started this pledge, and I will share with you what I think about Monster Hunter 4U, as well as how it compares to every other Monster Hunter game I've played so far. So before we get into that retrospect, let's just talk about Guard Point. The skill that I thought for sure was going to be needed to slay Fatalis, the final unlock to become a Charge Blade Master. Guard Point! What is it? Well, it's disappointing is what it is. So what I finally learned is that Guard Point is, everybody has explained it. The video that really made me understand what it was, was Eric's video because he freezes the frame and he puts a little green circle. He's like, that? That's what it is. Basically, when you're morphing from sword mode to axe mode, there are two animations where the shield is in front of your face. And that's not just for show. That shield is functional in that animation. So if you can time your animation to have the the shield in front of you, that is called a guard point. So now we know what it is. How is it valuable in battle? So here's my understanding of it now that I've tried using it and I honestly can't use it because I've just spent a hundred plus hours playing without it. To integrate guard point into my play style means relearning how to play Charge Blade. I have to reconfigure my whole brain for how to fight monsters that I've learned how to fight them by either like sidestepping or doing whatever I do with my Charge Blade. What I think Guard Point allows me to do is, so if you look at my footage without Guard Point, you'll notice that I'm often sheathing, rolling, jumping. With the Guard Point, I understand that it lets you basically keep your weapon unsheathed all the time. So instead of sheathing and dodging, if you time your animation, you just guard, get out of the way, and then you're already in a position to like move into your combo and offense, which is great in concept and in theory, but in application, it is so hard to get the timing right. And I, I tried it against the Tigrex, which is supposed to be one of the easiest monsters to do it again. And I was getting hit so much because my timing and my rhythm isn't there because I have to relearn all the fights for, okay, he's coming in with that attack. I need to guard point now. And I haven't gone into that habit. I have muscle memory. I have so many like problems like, okay, I now understand what guard point is, but it is too late for me. So maybe the next Monster Hunter game I play, maybe I can learn guard point there. Maybe GU is where guard point becomes useful to me. And so that's the sad story of guard point. Now, the other thing that's left to explore in Monster Hunter 4U now that I've finished my pledge was there was a few side quests I hadn't finished in Village, which I'm happy to say I've now finished all of the side quests. There was a whole gunner side quest that I had ignored, uh, which if you go through all of that, you unlock Camellios in Village, which I hate Camellios, and it's basically a G-rank Camellios, and I had to fight it solo. So that was hard, but I overcame it. And then there's the funky feline. I was going to say the frickin' funky feline. That's a lot of Fs. His quest line, while it starts out cute with a whole afro and everything, ends up with a Rajang. You have to fight a Furious Rajang, a G-rank Furious Rajang, solo because it's in Village. So that was probably the hardest quest, which I was not expecting to be there. Carded twice, almost carded a third time, but I overcame that one as well. And then finally, I figured, hey, let's see what happens when we finish the Caravaneers challenge. It is an absolute disgusting ridiculous hard quests even in full g rank endgame armor i still carded once and it was still not like crazy hard but i i can't imagine doing this in high rank armor with a high rank weapon when you do all that every npc in the game wants to talk to you so it's a huge celebratory moment you will uh, you get uh, an achievement and also you get the rainbow pigment which you can see in some of the footage that i've unlocked so i'm at least happy i know that i did that there's one for g rank if i can complete all of the quests yes. in g rank there's a similar Similar challenge that unlocks. I forget what it's called, but people have said it's it's also disgusting. And I don't have a cheat in that one to use like a super ultimate armor to make it actually easy. So that one's just not even that I, I just don't want to go through that kind of pain. Before we did that, there was a custom quest the community Immortal put together, Immortal Cripple. And this one was actually very well done. It wasn't a troll quest. I love the story about it. So the background of this quest is that Guildmarm's sweetheart, which if you remember is Bracadillos, has been caught cheating on her and we have to go in and punish Bracadillos for being a bad boy. And so it's an arena fight against double Bracky because Bracadillos basically cheated on Guildmarm by f with another Bracadillos. So you kill the Bracadillos, you kill his side chick, and then you have 
protected Guildmarm's honor. And then the episodic quest, I did two. One was the Chacha and Kayamba one, which reminded me how much I really don't like these two. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know some of you love them. I cannot stand them. So you do this whole quest line of trying to uh, save them from their stupid ventures of trying to get a mask. And then at the end, you actually save the Moga Sweetheart, which was one of my favorite characters from 3U. And if you finish the whole episodic quest line, she actually shows that you can replace your house cat with the guild, uh, not the guild marm, with the Moga Sweetheart, which is like, that's a really nice touch for an episodic. That's a such a cool, like little reward. I love it. So I, I tossed my cat out the door. Like, and then the other one was called the Sweetheart Square Off, which was a really weird quest that included Gen 2 characters that I don't know, like the Jumbo Sweetheart. And the whole quest line was about highly suggesting that they were talking about comparing their breasts to each other, like their boobs, and that all the quests are related to go and, and get the... Um, something that is similar size to their you know what's that's exactly what they call them in games the you know what's and i know i know the game's gonna twist it and being like at the end we weren't talking about our breasts you big pervert but like it is so there's so much innuendos i'm just gonna go with it because you know what i didn't actually complete the quest line i died to the final one which was where we were supposed to get the biggest you know what whatever that may be um and i lost to a gold rathian because i was using dual blades of all things and during all these episodic challenges the community, specifically Gajira, had brought out these wheels for like an added level of fun where we challenge ourselves. So you spin a wheel that's predetermined with like all these things like, oh, you can only use this weapon. So I kind of tagged into these challenges, one of which was I had to use a dual blade. And for the Gold Rathian specifically, if anybody carded, they couldn't come back to the fight. And so we were down to, I was with dual blades against Gold Rathian. I'd never like use this in this game. So it wasn't pretty, but uh, yeah, that's how I carded. So overall, it was fun. It was a great way to finish uh, my, my journey of Monster Hunter for you. I'll probably do one last like stream just before the server shut down on the days the server shut down, just like as a good send off. Because honestly, Monster Hunter for you, and this is where we're getting into the retrospect, has been such a special game to me. And I, I think it's a special game for a lot of you and I understand why. So when I went back and looked at my first impressions, my journal zero, there's kind of five things that stood out uh, when I was like getting prepared. So I knew that the world building was was praised in this game. And I have to say in retrospect, yeah, these characters I grew so attached to. The Caravaneer, the Man, the Guildmarm, they had such rich personalities and such like so much characterization. Even though you don't interact with them much, I missed them and that world and the fact that there were all these villages. You don't get that. Like there's a lot more world building in Rise and World, but I don't miss the handler i don't miss the admiral uh th they were there they had some charm it was a good game but for you really created this bond with the player that i don't think any other monster hunter game has and that will be missed and i really hope that we can get back to a monster hunter game someday whether it's wild or another one down the line where we can get back to that rich level of attachment to the characters because we're having so much fun with them and having so many memorable moments which is often like a blend of comedy and drama like we just, it's a very fine balance but they did so well here so totally agree with that the other thing that i was really concerned about in my journal zero was that it was on a handheld this was the first time i was going to play a monster hunter game handheld everything else was always on a pc or switch in the end you know i was struggling with that nub but the fact that i went through all those challenges killed all those monsters all while playing on a 3ds like it still shocks me that i didn't grow too fatigued about it i think it would have definitely have been better on a controller in the long run but yeah i made it like at the end i was slipping a little bit and the nub felt like it was getting less responsive so i think we were maybe getting at the end life of the con of the handheld i absolutely agree that if they could ever do one thing as a remake i think for you is a very strong contender because of the world building because it's a game that's never been experienced on a controller i think all the other monster hunter games had a console remake or version i could be wrong another thing was the charge blade it was the very first time i was actually properly pledging to not use the switch axe and charge blade is my home it's just i'm so comfortable using it in for you even though i think that i could have learned it a different way with uh, guard point so you know charge blade is now 
easily one of my weapons that I want to use. I did dabble in it in Rise a few times and I felt it was too fast and too much to worry about in Rise because you have to charge the sword, the shield, the axe. There's just so many more things to do with it. So it'll be another learning uh, path to play Charge Blade in the later games. In my next game with GU, I don't know what I'm going to play, um, but I really did enjoy the experience of learning all over again a whole new weapon. And Charge Blade had so much to offer that it was quite fun. And it had the, the whole morphing, which made me feel a little bit familiar with the Switch X. And I'm really glad I picked it. I don't think I would have had as much fun with the Switch X. Uh, just thinking like through you, what my experience was there. The gameplay was fairly dry because my optimal way to attack was just go slash slash with the sword mode. Then there was also when I was like debating my pledge for For You, I was like, oh, people told me don't pledge all the monsters because that includes Apex. And I had no context for what that meant. In hindsight, the, the roster of Monster Hunter For You was really good and I, I really feel like there were so many iconic bosses you know from Delameter to um, Gogmazios like all of these monsters there was just so much diversity you could fight so many things and there was so many to explore like way huge step forward from 3U and still very different from what I got in World and then finally there was the whole pledge of Fatalis was that good was that bad uh, in hindsight Fatalis in this game is it's a very different experience than world it's not the same build up it's not the same kind of fight and while i'm happy i did i have no regrets of that being my pledge there was more to this game than fighting fatalis and i'm glad i did that pledge because it helped me see everything else but fatalis was almost like a side quest compared to the rest like unlocking the scrolls was an adventure that made me play so much multiplayer and we got so many like shenanigans in multiplayer this is probably the game honestly i had the most fun in multiplayer just because there was so many kind of like different things to do there's so many different mechanics and it just yeah i just had a lot of fun when i compare it to 3u blows it out of the water honestly 3u i will i won't shy away from this I was so done with that game. I was ready to move on and I have no interest in going back. 3U is probably, while I appreciate the old world, I appreciate what I had to do. It's one of my least favorites uh, of all the games. And then you've got World and Rise, which it's very hard to compare those to these older games, uh, but 4U still oozes a lot more of that charm and that creates more of that personal connection. You no, know, Rise and Sunbreak will always have kind of that fun element that more arcadey aspect that, that fluidity but i'm not connected to that world in any way and world will always be special to me because it's where i started so that one has massive bias so yeah for you you know if you never had the chance to try it i do recommend playing it even though the servers are going to be out soon i really hope capcom takes the time to remaster because this is a very special game and just looking and hearing um, what the community has to say about the other Monster Hunter games, I don't think I'm going to get this experience at any other time. So this has really been one of my you know, richer Monster Hunter experience. I'm very thankful I got it, and I'm very thankful all of you helped me get to it uh, and helped me discover this game. And I'm glad we got to do it with the multiplayer, with the server still on. So that's my thoughts on For You. It is up there, definitely with World, easily above 3U for me. It's above Rise Sunbreak for me. So that's my thoughts on Monster Hunter 4 you. I'll see you on the next journey, and uh, which is going to be GU. And until next time, keep it classy. It's a whole new world we live in. Monster Hunter 4 you. Everybody wants to be a master. Everybody wants to show their skills. Everybody wants to get there faster. Make your way to the top of the hill. Each time you try, it's gonna get just a little bit better. Each step you climb, just one more step up the ladder. It's a whole new world we live in. It's a whole new way to see. It's a whole new place with a brand new attitude. But you still gotta hunt them all and be the best. That you can't be Monster Hunter for you Monster Hunter for you Monster Hunter for you